Hi, everybody. My name is Eric Bucci. I'm the lead pastor here at the Cornerstone Church, and we just talked about prayer. And I just want to take a few moments just to address uh, what's been happening in our country just for a few moments. I just want to let you know, first of all, this is not, I'm not going to be political. I'm going to be biblical. And um, I just want to encourage you to know that we don't, we don't serve a political party. We serve Jesus Christ. And we want, yes, come on. And uh, we want to inform political parties and not let them fool us and try to control us. Because we are, our allegiance is to Almighty God. But something extraordinary happened on, uh, on Friday where uh, after almost 50 years, the Supreme Court ruled that no longer would abortion be legal in all 50 states. And it's now going to the individual states. And I never thought it's going to, I'm, I'm shocked it actually happened. But I want to say something really important. Why does it matter? Well, first of all, I don't know if you realize it. Guess who the first person to recognize Jesus was? John the Baptist in his mother's womb leapt when Mary came in. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, it says, while you were in seclusion, I formed you in your mother's womb. We believe that life begins at conception. We do. Because Jesus actually believes it. The Bible believes it. And so we're not into all the politics of it, but we're into biblical of protecting life. And so lives matter from the womb all the way to the tomb. And also, we got to make sure we're not just against stuff, we're for life. And so for those that choose uh, to, get adop- to have adoption or things of that nature, we should be able to help them. It's a crisis pregnancy center here in Cheshire. We're a part of that as well. But we want to do more and more to help during this time. And don't get into heated arguments with people. Nothing is accomplished that way. But I want to let you know we're for life. And that's what it's about. It's about the life. And I wanted to say a couple of things about it as well. You know, a lot of the problems, for example, I don't know if you recognize this, in the country of China, there's a demographic problem in China because they had forced abortions. You're only allowed, for a period of time, you're only allowed to have one child. And so in the country of China, for a long time, in this China, if someone had a girl, sometimes they would abort the girl because they wanted to have a boy. So there's a disproportionate amount of men in China than there is women, which has caused all type of sociological problems. Well, in the United States, we've, we've aborted our country in a neighborhood, I think it's 80 million, if I'm not mistaken. And today, there's not enough people in the workforce to pay for Social Security. Could it be that cancer would be eradicated by a scientist that was aborted? You don't know. And so we, we don't want to get into all the politics, but we do, not, we do need to pray. And I want to encourage you, everybody, the political season is arising again. And I just wanted to say a couple things about it. And how, guess how you raise money? By scaring people and going to extremes. The right does it. The left does it. Let's not be that way. Let's focus on Christ. Let's speak to the different political parties. Let's get involved in our towns. Let's speak the truth and love and power. Let's come against the evil one, but not people. And let's remember, the enemy is not a person. It's the enemy is the enemy. And so I just want to encourage you with that today because this will be a lot of upheaval in the coming months. And we want to do more to promote life in these times. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much. You're a God of love and peace and joy. We want to thank you, Father, that you have created us in your image. And Father, that every life matters to you. And Jesus, we're asking as the church We're asking for your church across the United States of America, wherever people gather, Lord, we would stand for life and stand for you more than ever. Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom how to navigate in these times, that we be sources of life wherever we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Something else I want to say, as much as I appreciate laws of the land, the best way to change a nation is one heart at a time. That's how, this, that's how Jesus told us to go to all the earth, preaching the gospel to every individual. It's one life at a time. That's how we change. You cannot legislate morality. 
You won't get lost, but to change the heart is the key. Amen? Well, I don't know if I introduced myself yet. If I did, I will. My name is Eric Bucci. Did I already? Oh, my Lord. This is what happens when you're above 30. But it's good to see everybody. We do want to welcome all those that are watching. If you're watching at home or if you're in a pool with an iced tea and a bagel or uh, if you're at the lake, if you're still in bed with Pastor Pillow and Sister Sheets <laughs> and Betty Bed Comforter, we, we want to welcome you. Listen, it's great to be home, it's, but you know, there's nothing like being together in a room with other people going after God. Can you guys welcome everyone nice and loud? Let them know you love them. Yeah. Come on, a little louder than that. Come on, let them know you love them. A little better than that. Come on. <laughs> Well, I was, uh, I was really pleasantly surprised last week with the response I got from my dad jokes. And it got to such a degree that I was encouraged by the little bit of laughter for two or three people that I have been encouraged. To, since we're talking about God the Father and Father jokes, I thought I could share a few dad jokes with you. Is that okay, everybody? Okay, here we go. Here, here's, a, here's a dad joke, okay? I'm a dad. I like to get jokes, okay? I don't have a dad bod, but I do have dad jokes. Okay. Do you know... The first French fries weren't actually cooked in France. Did you know that? The first French fries were not cooked in France. They were cooked in Greece. Okay. If a child refuses to sleep during nap time, they're guilty of resisting a rest. It took me 20 minutes to find these. <laughs> what do you call someone with no body and no nose? Nobody knows. <laughs> and here's a, here's a really, this is actually a good one. This is actually a really good one. If a mom asks a father, how do I look? The dad should say, with your eyes. <laughs> that will save you from so many arguments. How do I look? Guys, come on, that's worth the price of admission. <laughs> and finally, how do you make holy water? You boil the hell out of it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> what does it have to do? Nothing to do. Well, actually, it does have a lot to do with it. We're talking about how to pray. And we're going through the Sermon on the Mount. And we've been going through it. And Jesus gets into a segment and a section where he begins to describe how you and I can pray. And people have called it the Lord's Prayer, but it's actually the disciples' prayer because the disciples asked him, how do we pray? They saw Jesus' intimacy. They saw his power, and they wanted to ask, how do you have this relationship? And so last week, we spoke about the Lord's Prayer. So we talked about last week, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. And so our Father, our Dad, uh, it's incredible. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to just go ahead and read these together like I used to when I grew up Presbyterian. We used to have responsive reading. We would all stand up together, and we'd all read it, and someone would say the wrong statement about debts. So I put this down so we can all read it and be in unity so no one says the wrong thing. Okay, because that was my pet peeves. But that's beside the point. Let's read this together if you could be so kind. What, let's, wait, in this manner, pray. Here we go. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You know, this is an amazing prayer because it begins with worship and it ends with worship. That's the bread that holds the prayer together. And it begins with extolling who God is and getting out of your own head. I I'm going to tell you, most of my problems happen when I get in my own head. Am I the only one that, get that has a problem? When I get in my own head and think about my own thing, my own observations, what I, what I see at the moment and the time, that's when either I get proud, arrogant, fearful, angry, you name it, right? 
But this is what Jesus said. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father. Now, prior to this, remember we talked about this in the previous verses. It talked about that when you go to pray, go to a quiet place to be seen by your Father in secret. So there is a place for individual prayer. But when we pray to God, we must remember something very important. What does it say? My Father? Or what does it say? Our Father. That's right. We're part of a community. You're not just by yourself. It's not just about my personal Jesus. I have my personal. No, we are part our, which means community. That's why we encourage you to be a part of a community, to get involved in a small group, to know different people so you're not all by yourself. Okay, does that make sense? Our Father. And, and the word Father, we mentioned last week, it was a, a term never used by rabbis. Very rarely was it ever used. It might have been used to describe God in the nation of Israel and God. But it was never used as a personal way of praying. Jesus did something scandalous and said, My Abba Father, which is a daddy. Basically, that's our vernacular today. We talked about last week, daddy. So our father, it's our father. It's not just my personal Jesus. It's your father as well. It's not just about me. You know how freeing that is? Our father in heaven. So not only is he close to us, but he's also in heaven, the creator of everything you see and do not see. So not only is he, is, is he closer than your skin, but it's also bigger than you can imagine. It's like, it's like in, as much as I enjoy fire, and I love fire, but if you mishandle it, you can really cause all kinds of problems. Or electricity. I like, thank, how many people like electricity? <laughs> Praise God for it. But don't put your hand in the socket, and don't climb an electrical tower and try to repel. I, I don't recommend it, okay? No, why? You have to respect you have to have a healthy fear in order to appreciate electricity. And so it's our Father in heaven, but God is fierce, he's powerful. And what's so great about this, when you and I begin prayer, we begin in worship. Do you recognize that worship is the position for revelation? Worship is the position when you and I get out of our heads. Look at your neighbor says, get out of your head. Okay? Get into the Lord. You know how many times I've, I've come to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do. God, help me. And I start, and I'm, but instead I've been practicing this. Our Father who art in heaven, God, how great is your name. And I begin to extol who God is and begin to talk about who he is, how faithful he's been, our Father. He's been faithful to Abraham, faithful to my grandparents, been faithful to my parents all through my life. He's our God, not just my God, our God. And I'm a part of a big family. And he's been faithful through thousands of years. And that encourages me. Our Father, who art in heaven, the creator of everything. I'm not coming, oh, oh Lord, you know how bad things are. No, we serve a powerful God. He's not weak. So stop putting your weakness on God. Our Father in heaven, holy, hallowed. What does hallowed mean? Is that the hollow log? No. Hallowed means be glorified. Be, if you look in the Greek, it's a continuous, present continuous action. Be made holy. We don't make God holy. But what we're doing is, God, let your holiness be upon me. Let your perfection be upon me. Let the holiness of God be upon me. And listen, everybody, holiness is one of the most wonderful things that you and I can experience. Holy does not mean boring. Holy means whole. Because all of us are like Swiss cheese. You got a lot of holes in you. Sin kind of puts holes in you. But what God does is he brings wholeness because he's created you. He knows your design. He knows every vibration of your molecules. He knows every strand of DNA. He knows every blood cell in you. He knows every cell in your body. And I want his wholeness upon my mind, my body, and my spirit. And when I do his, Lord, let your holiness be upon me. When I choose his ways, it brings wholeness. There are spiritual laws when you trust God. 
So we're getting to that in the Lord's Prayer. So our Father who are in heaven, hallowed, how wonderful, how pure, how lovely is your name. Oh God, let me understand that you are perfect in every capacity. I remember going to the Grand Canyon, looking over the edge, which I don't recommend. <laughs> Be very careful. And I was like this. And I was by myself, and I saw, I'm like, holy. I remember when Luke was born, my first son. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but cry. It was a miracle. The baby was born. Holy, right? I'm overwhelmed by it. Hallowed. So our dad, who's close to me, in heaven, all power, great is your name. Do you know that most of the greatest things that happened in Scripture, in the history of the church, happened through worship first? They were worshiping God in the upper room. And while they prayed, God's spirit fell. Later on, when Peter and John were beaten up, they went back and they prayed and worshiped God. And as they worshiped God, the place was shaken. They were worshiping God and praying, and God set apart Paul and Barnabas. Worship is the catalyst for the movement of God in our lives. And so when you love God and get his perspective on things, everything changes. So today, we're talking about this. My kingdom come. I'm sorry, what does it say? Your kingdom come. That's the key. Your kingdom. You know what a kingdom is? In the Latin, king, dom, dominion. Does God have dominion in your life? Kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Not my kingdom, not even the kingdom of the United States, not the kingdom of a particular political party, or candidate, but your kingdom come. What does that mean? We're going to unpack it some more. You see, there are two kingdoms right now. There's the kingdom of God, and there is the kingdom of Satan. You have two fathers, God the Father, and Satan is the father of lies. Who do we listen to most of the time? I want to let go of that bad father and get the real father. And there's two kingdoms, the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Satan. There's just two kingdoms. And so which one do you want to listen to? The kingdom of Satan's job, which we're going to break through in a few moments, is to destroy God's kingdom. And just fool people. He's called the great deceiver, trying to destroy what God has made. All you have to do is look in the, at your local uh, headlines and see what's going on in the world today. So let me just go explain. In Adam and Eve, when they were in Eden... You had God, you had the kingdom of heaven and earth. They were all synonymous. They were all one. There was no pain. There was no suffering. Here's a rule I really appreciate. There were no mosquitoes. Can I hear an amen? amen. If I start going like this, the other night we had a lot of mosquitoes. That's beside the point. There was no mosquito. Everything was perfect in heaven. Everything was wonderful. God and, and man were together. And man was naked and unashamed. He was covered with God's presence. Ever since then, you and I have in... In separate insecurity, we try to cover up our lives with accomplishments, with entertainment. We feel we're naked, but God covers us with his presence. And this was the perfect coronation. It is one, God and man. There was nothing to disturb it. It was a beautiful until mankind decided to go its own way. So, so you had the parts of the soul. So when we were in the Garden of Eden, you had, the whole, you had the kingdom of God was inside of them. You have your body, you have your soul and your spirit. Uh, the parts of the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And then you had the spirit of God. But what happened when sin came, this was broken. And also what happened was the kingdom of heaven was one, but all of a sudden sin happened and the earth was cursed. There was a clean, boom, it went like this. So now you have the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth. It's temporarily Satan's limited control. Now, certain very clearly here, God is still sovereign over both things. And sin separated. So what did God do? God looked for Adam and Eve. They were hiding. Maybe some of you are hiding with your accomplishments. Maybe some of you are hiding with religion. They had their fig leaves, and God came looking for them. God comes looking for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so what did God do? He found them, and he covered them with skins. 
You see, the Lord established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. You see, your kingdom, that's God's kingdom, is everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. So when we had a broken, we had broken sin here, this is what happened. And so there was a separation, man died. There was something wrong with man. But there's something extraordinary happened is when God got the animal skins and covered Adam and Eve, he put a temporary sacrificial system which later on came in the tabernacle in the wilderness. And that tabernacle is a picture of what's inside of us. And there was an ark of the covenant. Ark means like an ark, like an orbit. That's where God would commune. His presence would come down through that. And so they had a temporary sacrificial system which would allow the kingdom of heaven to kind of meld between each other to a certain degree. And he would come in this way until Jesus was the final priest. And then we became a priesthood of believers. In other words, all of us have access to God because of what Jesus did. You see, Satan who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ. He he is the God of this world. Who's the God of this world? Satan. Temporarily, he is. They began screaming at him, Why are you interfering with us, son of God? This is the demon speaking to him. Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? They know their time is short. Then Jesus said this, you would have no power over me at all unless you were given to you from above. He's talking about when he was being, when he was being tried before the people. No one takes my life, I give it. So the one who has handed me over to you is the one that has the greater sin. Jesus answered and said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not here. So you have God. And so when Christ died on the cross, something happened. There was an intersection. Heaven is not a place you just got, die and go to someplace. It's not some far off place. Heaven is right around us. The kingdom of heaven's right around us. The Bible says we have a great cloud of witnesses. No, we don't pray to our, I don't pray to Aunt Martha in heaven. I don't even have an Aunt Martha, but I just use it since it sounds funny. Okay. Or Bertha. I don't have that in heaven. But we do have a great cloud of witnesses. We don't pray to them. But they're around us. We're part of God's plan. So the kingdom of heaven's right here. When you die, you go to a different realm. It's not like you just take off. To, no, it's right here. The kingdom of God's right here among you. You can see it in the scripture where Elijah said, God opened Gehazi's eyes and he saw legions of angels. God's presence is right here. It intersects because of Jesus. It, it, we have availability. I'll explain it in a few moments. The kingdom of earth, temporarily Satan's limited control. And the kingdom of heaven, let your kingdom come. God, I want your kingdom to invade me, which we'll explain in a few moments. For example, the United Kingdom controlled Hong Kong for over 100 years. But in 1997, they lost the jurisdiction and it went back to communist China. So temporarily, the United United Kingdom had it. And then People Republic of China got it in 1997. Or I'm going to give you another example. Uh, uh, Please, there's no commentary in this example. It's just an example to illustrate a point. There are Indian reservations. Mohegan Sun, the whole area over there, that's an Indian reservation. They have their own rules and regulations there. They have their own security forces. They have their own rules. That's why you can have casinos things of that nature, right? So they have their own jurisdiction. They have their own law. They have their own ecosystem, if you will. However, if they step outside the bounds, then we can come in. The police can come in and others can come in. Satan's the same way. He's got a limited control that we have given him and we've abrogated our authority by giving it back to him. Okay, so here's what Jesus says about the kingdom of heaven. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So when Jesus came, the kingdom of God started coming. He started releasing. It was one man, Jesus, who released the kingdom, one person, one time. And he said this, it's to your advantage that I go away, that he may come, and you're going to go in my stead. You're going to have millions of other people that are going to bring the kingdom to the earth. Let me just stop here for a moment. I am not a kingdom now theology person. Oh, no, I know where he's going with this. No, I'm not about that. I'm about God in us. 
about the kingdom of God being released, but he's going to come back and make everything right at one time. We talked about that. So, and you, this is what he says, as you go, preach, saying what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heaven is not just a place you go. Heaven's right here, right now. Okay? So, the kingdom of heaven is here. The Bible says in Ephesians, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Am I in heaven right now? No, but my authority, I'm with Christ in heavenly places. I have an access point in heaven. Do I travel to heaven back and forth? No, I do not do that. There are some people that claim to do that. That's for next week when Pastor Rich preaches. (laughs) I leave everything to him. As you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent. For what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus brought it to earth. Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. He answered to them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor do they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God becomes inside of you, the kingdom of God, in your spirit. In your spirit. When you give your life to Jesus, the inside of your spirit, the kingdom of God is there. Jesus says, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And so as we allow the spirit of God to flow out of us, and I can have the kingdom of the, of the Lord, a kingdom of me. When someone cuts me off in traffic, I can choose to have the kingdom of God or the kingdom of sign language. What are you guys laughing for? I go like this, love. And steer with my knees. Okay? So we had this in spirit of God. So I want God's kingdom to come out of me, to touch my soul. I want God's kingdom to touch my mind, to think of Christ, my will, my emotions, and my body. And sometimes we pray over someone. We've seen God, I can't control who's healed and who's not healed, but we've asked for God's kingdom to come and touch people's bodies. People receive their hearing back and and cool things like that have happened. Okay? So, you have the kingdom of heaven. Jesus bakes a way for us. Now, the kingdom of God is inside of you. And these little dots, it represent you and I bringing the kingdom. We should be windows of heaven. We can bring. We're like air conditioners. How many folks appreciate air conditioning? When I go to heaven one day, I say, God, thank you. Whoever invited air conditioning, I'm, I'm assumed they're a born-again believer. Because only a godly person would make an invention like that. Praise the Lord. The next one would be screens to keep these mosquitoes away. Okay, as you can tell, I got an issue with mosquitoes. Okay? But God, so God's over all realms. And the kingdom of God is here. And the enemy knows his time is short. It's a limited scope of time. So he's trying to cause as much division and difficulty as he can. And so you and I can bring the kingdom. Now what's going to happen is this. Okay, I'm going to give you an example, and examples fall short, unfortunately, because I'm trying to explain the unknown with the known. And the known is inaccurate and not good enough to explain the unknown. But it helps us a little bit. Imagine, if you will, maybe you have a pool, and you open the pool up after the winter. It's some green sludge. It's disgusting. You you get out the leaves, and then what do you do? You, You shock it, right? You shock it. You throw chlorine in there, and you you shock it. When Jesus died on the cross, he shocked heavens and the earth. His blood shocked the earth, and he began to change the chemical composition of mankind. And it's still being shocked, and the process is going on. People go, why does God allow so much evil in the world? You realize the Bible says this. Our momentary affliction is nothing in compared to eternity. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. There's something that happened on the day of Calvary. The process began. The kingdom of God began. It's not in completion yet in our sphere of reality. But in heaven, it's already done through Christ. And we're just waiting for the chemical thing to happen. It's shock. And God is sending us to go out and prepare for the final shock when Jesus comes back and creates a new heaven and a new earth. Are we going to be pre-raptured? I'm not going to get into that. Pastor Rich, next week we'll talk about that. So the king, Pastor, where is Pastor Rich? Okay. He's out there doing good work. Okay. So, we, so what happens is, this is what happens. And Christ comes back 
Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you great wrath because he knows his time is short. It's going to get bad. It's going to get worser. Worser. Just tell him today. Say, I learned a new way of speaking in church. It's called worser. And ain't is in the dictionary. And before you know it, worser will be there too. I think that's a city in Massachusetts. Oh, that's Worcester. Okay. So devil has come down to you. Great wrath became he knows his time is short. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But lift up your eye. Your redemption draws nigh. Listen, we got to stop all this, oh, you know, the devil. Oh, you know, all oh, the devil. I, I talk to some people, and I, I say, how you doing? Oh, the devil. I don't want to hear about the devil. How's it going? All oh, the devil's attacking me. You know what? Enough of the devil. The devil's real, but he's a defeated foe. The best days are always ahead for those in Christ Jesus. Why? Because I am an eternal being. This is a temporary gestation period. I'm in the womb of the earth, and one day I will be birthed into eternity. So right now I hear sounds outside the womb. I hear the voice of my Father. I sense the love of God. And one day I'm going to be birthed out of this place, praise the Lord. But until that time comes, I'm developing in the womb. The kingdom of God is growing me, and he hope he's growing you. You and I should let the kingdom, the umbilical cord of heaven, to get into your navel and grow and let the kingdom of God give you power and give you grace in the fluid of the Holy Spirit that you and I can grow to gestation. <laughs> then the seventh angel blew the trumpet, and there was a loud voice. This is why we have loud music. Praise. See, it's in the scriptures. <laughs> Can I just say something kind of funny? <laughs> just want to bring, I want to let people know. Um, I had a friend of mine that pastors a church. And someone, and this happened here at this church, someone was complaining how loud the music was. And they said, Pastor, and this is not in this church, another church. Pastor, it's so sad. What's the matter? Everyone on the worship team has hearing aids because they can't hear. I just want to let everyone know, those things in the ear, they're ear monitors. So we don't have these wedges up here blowing. I just want to let you know that. Okay. Just. Why did I say that for? Just to let you know, because they have not lost their hearing yet. Okay. But the same name, the loud voice is in heaven, and the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord. That's going to happen. We're no longer of this, this, this separation of it, but the kingdom of heaven is among you. But finally, it will be completion. We'll be birthed into a new world. And the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and the Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Come on, everybody. Amen. <laughs> We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The joy of the Lord has to be our strength. We're going to head in some difficult times coming up. A little bit. We need to stop worrying about the economy. I know, I don't like $8 a gallon either. Where's the $8 in California? I don't like it either, but guess what? We win. This is temporary. This is temporary. From my understanding, honey, help tell me this is true. When you were pregnant, it was painful, right? Yeah, but how did it feel afterwards? Fine, okay, see? I, I would never get pregnant if it was me. I told you already, it, I've said this many times, if it was up to men, there, this, there'd be nothing here. <laughs> but eventually, there's going to be, boom, interface together. God, the kingdom of God, and, and a new heavens and a new earth with a Jerusalem, and there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And we're not going to sit around in the sky with harps, with naked babies shooting arrows. No, we're going to be doing amazing things. God's going to have us create with him. We're going to be, you think it's amazing here on earth, you haven't seen nothing yet. See, if people, I, when I think of heaven, I think, oh, boy, it's going to be boring. No, it's going to be amazing. Your best day is nothing compared to that. But there's a place called hell, too. You know what hell is? You can see, you know, that just like there's heaven on earth, right? Remember we talked about that? that you, heaven on earth? There's hell on earth right now as well. You want to see hell on earth? See the racism? 
You see all the wars going on. You see what's going on in Ukraine. You see what's going on when someone beats up their child and and abuse and all these things. You want to see hell? That's a shape of hell. You pull God out, hell happens. Hell's not a place that God's designed. Hell's a place that you and I make when we pull God out of our lives. Now, hell will be a place. But I don't want that, do you? Now, I don't have time to do the theory of hell. I know I said some things. No, it's not. Okay, there's going to be a hell that goes on forever. But hell is void of God. Your kingdom come, your what? Will be done. So first of all, we need the kingdom. Uh, how many of you uh, came today uh, in an automobile or a motorcycle to church? Okay, how did I rest you guys come in a helicopter? I mean, what's... Oh, you walked. Took a bus. Okay. How did you get here this morning? On what? On, on roads, Right? Well, the reason you got here this morning is because we had the kingdom of the United States of America is a kingdom. It is a king's domain. It is a political system that has been set up. And the kingdom of the United States is here. In the kingdom of Connecticut, the kingdom of Connecticut and the kingdom of the United States has created order. And as a result of having a kingdom, they were able to build roads, you know, interstates, those are the kingdom of the United States. We've paved roads. And in Cheshire, they have roads. And in Wallingford and Middlebury and Southbury, Hoosbury, Whatbury, all those places have roads. Why? There's the kingdom. There's laws. You have stoplights. Stop signs. You're not supposed to roll through. Okay? You have all these things. You have, you have speed limits. Why? It is the kingdom. So the only way you can build roads and get anything done is there has to be a kingdom first. Until the land belongs to the United States, they can't do anything. When the kingdom comes, now the will can be done. The only way God's going to be able to have your life, you want to see God move in your life? It's not going to work until you surrender. Who's your king? Is it you or the Lord? See, the kingdom can't come. the, The will cannot happen until the kingdom has come. So you give your life to Christ. God, I give you my life. Your kingdom is now in me. And then he begins to pave roads in your life. Roads in your home. Roads in your community. Roads in the country. And these roads navigate where now you can begin to experience the blessings of being in the king. Kingdom. Does that make sense, everybody? You follow me? Okay. Okay. There are two wills. Here's the first one. My will. You know the satanic Bible, the first thing it says? It says, do what thou wilt. Do not look it up on the internet right now, please. If you do that, you're in trouble. (laughs) My will equals Satan. That's the if you if you live for yourself, you're living for Satan. Why? Because your design is by God for God. You take God out of the equation, you're gonna mess yourself up. Why? It's take an take an engine out of a plane and see what happens. You are made by God for God. So my will is Satan, and thy will is God. So we invite his kingdom. Let your kingdom come. God, I give you jurisdiction. Put the flag of Christ on this land. This land belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been bought with a Christ. Price. Thy will. What does that mean? Well, what did Jesus have to say when he was at the very end of his life? What did he say? Saying, Father, if it's whose will? Your will. Take this cup away from me. He's going to go to the cross. In other words, hey, Jesus, I mean, God, if there's any way, I don't have to go to the cross. I'm all ears, right? God, I don't want to go through this situation I'm going through right now. I don't like what's happening. Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, Not your will, but my will be done. Is that what it says? No. Not what? Not my will, but what? Your will. You and I have a question. You you and I have a choice. Do we want his will or our own will? But the only way his will is going to have freedom in your life is you have to give give up your life to him and hand over your land. And let the dominion of his kingdom come in your life. 
that his will can happen. I have a will every, every day, I have wills. Am I gonna let God have his way or not in everything that takes place? You see, in Acts 13, 36 says this. For David, that's King David, after he had served his own generation by the what? He fell asleep and was buried with his fathers, the will of God. David lived the will of God in his day. I pray that I live God's will in my day. The truth is, God's will for my life is similar to yours, but different. So don't be a facsimile of somebody else. Be who God has made you to be. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else and be the best you that God has created because no one can be you. Only you can be you. If you refuse to be you, the God that made you, you're going to be a facsimile and never that great. Be an original you because you're made in God's image and you're beautiful and God has a purpose. He has a plan for you. You're not an accident. So, God has a purpose in your plan. How does it happen? We have to surrender. Say, Lord, let your kingdom come. I lay up my kingdom to you. I surrender. God, here it is. Take over the land of my life. Now, your kingdom come. Now, let your will be done. Here at church, our objective is to help his will happen by being in community. Our Father who is in heaven. We want to work together to see God pave roads in our lives that we could see may and wonderful things happen. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That God's will can come to earth by you and I. That you and I can be conduits. You and I can be windows of heaven or portals of heaven. And I pray that, your, that heaven comes out of you, that the kingdom of heaven is in you, that you and I walk around and that people see glimpses of heaven in this difficult time. It's almost like you're in, a, you're in a hot amusement park and it's hot and you go into the gift shop and it's cool, they have air conditioning. Oh, this is a wonderful, let me stay here for a while. I pray that you and I become air conditioners in this hot and humid world. People come into our lives. Wow, look at the refreshing you are. You are an island of refuge because the kingdom of heaven is in you. This is what the world needs. And it's not us, it's God in us. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. You are our Father. You are in heaven. Holy is your name. Let your holiness be seen in our lives. Lord, we pray that your kingdom would come. Lord, today we were set, we. We relent and we reaffirm that our lives are not our own. We ask your kingdom to come in our lives. We resign from being king of our lives. Right now, just take a moment right now. Lord Jesus, I resign from my own kingdom. I give you my life today. My life is yours in Jesus' name. Lord, let your will come in my life. Let your will be accomplished in my life. Let heaven flow through me on earth as it is in heaven, Father. In my home, in my workplace, in my relationships, in Jesus' name. Lord, in this church, let your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord, I pray that this would be a, a, this would be a place of refuge in Jesus' name. For you are our Father, in Jesus' name, amen.